Hello neighbors, it's Christopher Henry with you here and welcome back to the channel. And we're gonna be looking at the bouncy look today, which is one of our most favorite Monroe devices, modular device. We call them a modular device because there's a stock way that we do it. And then you can custom tailor it for many different applications and hundreds of thousands of different songs and tunes. So you change a few elements of the stock lick and you can fit it in and blend it in with whichever melody that you wanna be playing. So as you can hear in the background, we've got Ronnie McCurry playing a bounce lick, David McLaughlin of the Johnson Mountain Boys playing a bounce lick, Bill Monroe, the inventor of the bounce lick on the mandolin in bluegrass style with the White House Blues, and then David doing some slow bounce licks in the Monroe Style Workshop. So we are going to learn it in the key of G today. What is the bounce lick, okay? So it is a four beat lick if you're counting the strong beats, and it's going to sound like this. Let's see what the amazing Wyatt Ellis has to say about the bounce lick. Hey everybody, the bouncy lick is a lick that I like to put in a lot of different situations, but one of my favorite places to put it is over the five chord going back to the one chord at the end of a phrase. And I thought I'd demonstrate that right now on your love is like a flower. One, two, three, four. y'all can enjoy this lick and keep on bouncing. Okay, so what is the bounce lick? You could think of it as a transition lick, going from your one chord to your four chord, for instance, from G to C, or from your five chord to your one chord, for instance, D to G. All right, so now I'm gonna play you our stock bounce lick, and it's gonna be 16 sixteenth notes, if you're counting the front beats only. And then we're gonna end with one more 16th note, which will be the first beat of the new bar, just to give you some more context. Okay, so it sounds like this. Okay, so we're in the key of G, and we're going to the C chord. All right, so it's four beats. One, E, and a two, E, and a three, E, and a four, E, and a one. All right, a little faster. One, E, and a two, E, and a three, E, and a four, E, and a one. Okay, so now for some note for note instruction. Okay, so we're gonna learn it without the bounce first, just so we can see how easy it is. So it's a descending scale starting from the fifth in G. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. The fifth note in the G scale is the fifth fret of the A. So we're gonna start there. And for now, let's just do all downstrokes. Let's play what would be eighth notes if we're just counting the front beats. Okay, so it's gonna sound like this. One and two and three and four and one. Start with your ring finger, the middle, then first. Five, three, two, then come down to your little finger on the D string, seventh fret. Seven, and ring finger on the fifth fret. Five, then three, two, middle, first. And then your little finger on the G string, seventh fret. Seven, and then your last note in this context is gonna be the fifth fret of the G. Okay, so just doing that again. Five, three, two, seven, five, three, two, seven, five. Just remember to get your little finger on the seventh fret of the D and the G coming down. Okay, now we're gonna put the bounce to it. How's this work? So you play each note, and you play the upstroke underneath which note you just played on the open string. It's just that easy. All right, so five, bounce, three, bounce, two, bounce, seven, bounce, five, bounce, three, bounce, two, bounce, seven, bounce, five. Sounds a little odd slow, but if you speed it up. Okay, so let's think about what this musical context could be. So let's just think about using the bounce lick as an exercise to do a one, four, five progression. All right, so our progression like Blue Ridge Cabin Home be G, 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 C, 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 D, 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 G, 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 G. Okay, so if you remember the simple arpeggio video, we can put a little lick over the C chord that's gonna sound like this. Okay, so when we get done doing the bounce lick, let's put our little simple C arpeggio in there. So it's gonna sound like this. Okay, so one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one and a two and three and four and. Okay, so 
that is going to be the first half of this progression, the one, four, five progression. All right. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to do basically that same thing, just shift it down one set of strings. So instead of starting on the fifth fret of the A, we're going to start on the fifth fret of the E. It's going to sound like this. All right. So the whole progression is going to sound like this. So let's try that slowly. But before we do, please, please like, like and, and subscribe. subscribe. Go ahead and hit that little bell there from the notifications and you'll get all the good stuff from Noy Mountain Music. Thank you. And please consider becoming a patron on patreon.com slash Noya Mountain Music. One, two, ready, go. Okay, so we're just getting to know the bouncy leg. Okay, so I'll just add a little upstroke to our simple arpeggio leg. Just a little bit more of the down up tremolo for that same note pattern. Okay, so now we kind of understand what's going on with it. So let's put some pickup notes onto the front of it. So let's talk about how we're going to count the pickup notes. All right, so we want to go like one and two and three and four and a one. Okay, so we're gonna have two sixteenth note pickup notes to the downbeat, which is gonna be the fifth fret of the A and a one. So you're gonna play a downstroke on the second fret of the A, upstroke on the third fret of the A, and then your bounce is gonna start on the fifth fret of the A coming down. All right, so one and two and three and go. I added those same pickup notes to the fifth fret of the E when we're coming down through D. All right. You can do this all kinds of your own way, but I'm just giving you some ideas, especially for the beginners and the intermediate level folks. Okay, so you have pickup notes to the downbeat. happened there that's the old double bounce okay so what is the double bounce let's listen to that again okay so instead of going all the way down to the C note fifth fret of the G the double bounce circles back on the D string so instead of hitting the seventh fret of the G after your second fret of the D you're going to come back up on the D string through your third fret, bounce, and then bounce down from the fifth fret of the D all the way down to the C note. Okay? So let's, let's listen to that again. Okay? So we wouldn't have room to do our full simple arpeggio lick there because the timing of it would be and a one, a and a two, a and a three. Not hitting the downbeat of the C bar on the C note anymore. Okay? And a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, because you walk back up the D string through the third fret to the fifth fret, and that is your downbeat, the one. One, and a two, and a three. Okay, this is the double bounce. All right, can we do the double bounce in D? Come back to G. Turns out we can. Okay, can we do a triple bounce? Let's think about doing the double bounce coming from D to G and then the triple bounce coming from G to C. All right. All right. So you can definitely do that. Are we getting lost without the context? Maybe so. 
let's put it in context. So for the triple bounce to work, we have to have a different chordal context, okay? So with Blue's Cabin Home, we have the one, four, five, one progression, then it starts over in the one chord, all right? So for instance, if you were playing Your Love's Like a Flower, which is one, four, one, five, and then it starts over in the one, and just has one bar of the one chord before the second four chord, it will work there, okay? So here's the context. Oh, they tell me love's like a flower In the springtime blossom so fair In the fall when it withers away And they tell me that's the way of your love So you can hear how the triple bounce works there. triple bounce is a nice move that you can add sometimes when it's going from the five to the one to the four. Okay, so now we've learned how to bounce a little bit. Let's talk about how we can move it all over the neck. All right, guess what? You just go to A chord. It's right there. It's just that easy. It's right out of the chord. Okay, so you don't have to do anything different. You know, you just play it. It's actually easier to play up the neck because the frets are closer together. Okay, so just a little bit of context about where the bounce lick first came into bluegrass. It came in, uh, to my knowledge, through White House Blues. And the reason that we learn it this way and call it a modular device is that we got the glimpse of the possibility from Bill first playing it in the White House Blues way up in the key of B. He didn't do the full thing like we're learning here. He played it in the context of a larger modular device that we call the lick, which we'll be doing a full video on down the road. But just to get it in your ears and you might recognize it, it sounds like this. Something like that. Okay, he also played it in Bluegrass Breakdown in the key of G. You know, scooper in there. We're gonna get to all these modular devices. They're like merit badges. You gotta kind of have them all to get the full flow of the Monroe style. Okay, so Bill played this little piece right here. And we're just taking that and we're running with it. You know, you can do it so many different ways. to say the genesis of our stock bounce lick comes from White House Blues. He's doing a little bounce off the open E. So a lot of bouncing before we get to what we're doing right here. So the way it worked in White House Blues was he's using the major seventh instead of the nine or the two, which is what we're using with our little finger difference in the sound but it's easy to come all the way down the scale all right so here's some easy context for you we're gonna play the worried man blues super simple melody break and we're gonna put the bounce lick as a transition from the five back to the one it's gonna sound like this it takes those pickup notes to the fifth fret of the E for your D chord. And then tag it out however you want. So I'm worried now, but I won't be worried long. All right, so you're gonna take that up to A, same thing. The 
bouncing doesn't just have to be a transition from the five to the one. You can use little pieces of it anywhere you want to. For instance, nine pound hammer. of it in there. You know, put it in where you ever feel like it, you know. But just for practical application, it can be useful to think about it as a transition lick from a one to a four or a five to a one, especially when you have a full bar, four beats. Right? So you can think about your double bounce, you can think about your single bounce, you can think about your triple bounce, and just have fun putting it in wherever you want to. So if you watched the last video, which was the slidey lick, you can check that out if you haven't. We use the gospel set of I'll Fly Away, Will the Circle Be Unbroken, and I Saw the Light to understand how to put this into context. But that's not going to work as easily for the bounce lick because those songs end with a split bar at the end. So we need something that has a full bar of the five at the end. Take something like Rolling Mustard Baby's Arms. So let's use it on the transition from the five coming back to the one. So let's play a simple melody and then pop it in on the five chord. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Rolling Mustard Baby's Arms. Let's see if we can leave that triple bounce in there though. Here we go. One, two, three, four. So there are a couple examples of how you can weave the bouncy lick into standard jam session bluegrass material. As long as you've got a nice four beat five chord, you can come back to the one with it. You can also do the double bounce from the one to the four or the triple bounce from the five back to the one to the four. So let's see how we can do this on Will the Circle Be Unbroken. Here we go. One, two, three. Will the circle be unbroken? forth that work or something like that what about all fly away and put it as a transition between the one and the four chord here we go one two three four works good there what about i saw the light here we go. Okay, so you're putting at the beginning of the second bar. All right, so you play the melody for the first bar. And then your bounce down. You can bounce it all the way down to the C, but that's not where the melody note is. All right, so the melody over the four chord is for that A note, kind of. So here's an interesting kind of teachable moment about how you can really aim for the melody to modulate the lick, okay? So normally we would, we would end up on the fifth fret of the D for the downbeat of the fourth chord, but we really need that to be an A note. So how can we feel that? So we can either walk up instead of using the third fret of the D, use the fifth fret of the D, and then end up on our melody note. See how that worked? There's a little modulation there. So you can be tricky, you can be sneaky, you can be crafty with all that kind of stuff to glue the lick to the melody in a nice way. All right. So there you have a little rundown about how you can sneak that bouncy in, weave it to the melody. And then also you want to be aware that you can use the slidey lick and the bouncy lick in conjunction with each other to great effect for a total abstract way of playing it. You know, so for instance, if we're doing Will the Circle Be Unbroken, Will the Circle Be Unbroken by a bottle by a better home awaiting the sky, Lord, in the sky. back into 
your melody strong for the second half. Use your good split bar slidey for the end of that one. That's nice way you can use the slidey at the beginning and then bounce down without your pickup nose. Bounce back up to the fifth fret of the D instead of all the way down to C. Start your slidey lick on the fifth fret of the D. And then push into your 51 double stop. You can check out the double stops numbering system video if you want to to get a handle on what's going on with those numbers and the interval names. Okay, so that's how you wrap that up into the melody. Okay, so you can use that idea on all the gospel numbers and so many good traditional bluegrass numbers. The slidey lick and the bounce lick, super crucial. And coming up soon on one of these videos, we're gonna get the staggered 16th notes through the arpeggio in there. And then we'll have slidey, we'll have bouncy, and we'll have staggered 16th notes. And with those three modular devices and access to switch and swap with the melody, you will have nearly infinite creative potential and possibility with your bluegrass improvising. All right, so I hope that's as exciting as it sounds in my head to you. So as always, if you're liking the content here, please like and let me know in the comments what you're into, what you wanna be learning about, what you're connecting with, all that kind of stuff. And please think about becoming a Noia Mountain Music patron so you can have more cool content coming to the YouTube channel like this. Okay, thank you neighbors and we'll see you on the next one.